Well, we are facing the possibility that the system of our uh, international relations as we know it will be deeply affected. Actually, it's already deeply affected. Of course, we hope that at the end of the pandemic, things could go back to normal, as we say, but we don't know what would be this normal. You know, at the moment, there are disruptions in the life of uh, everyone and also in the international relations systems. It's difficult to travel. Uh, it is difficult to keep uh, our relations uh, as we, um, we, have, we had before. At the same time, I must say that, uh, in a way, uh, contacts uh, are made easy by the new technologies. So uh, while before we thought that we should always um, be in person to talk, now instead we are used to talk with different platforms, uh, with webinars. I have an uh, average couple of webinars a week, uh, sometime in hours that are not very convenient because uh, if they're based in Europe, there is eight hours difference. So, so sometime we, we learn to, to work in uh, also in different time zones. Uh, this is the positive aspect. Of course, uh, uh, we are worried that some effects like the, um, can I say, uh, um, uh, the difficulties to uh, enter countries could, could stay for, for a period. You know? uh, before we were used to uh, travel quite easily uh, from a place to another. Now instead, uh, you need visa almost everywhere. Uh, we, you need some time to present some uh, medical test, medical result. We don't know how long this will, will um, uh, stay, uh, when this will be taken away. This is affecting not only our personal life, but think of companies that uh, have uh, business all over the world. Think of people that uh, um, work, traveling, and so on. For instance, Italy is uh, a country that relies very much on tourism. Uh, before pandemic, uh, more than one million Koreans a year visited Italy. Uh, of course, now this is not there anymore. So the people are suffering uh, because of uh, this pandemic. And we don't know when we can travel for business, for, for leisure, or for any reason, again, like we did before. Yes, this is, this is a very good question. Uh, we don't have to uh, um, uh, give up. We don't have to think that uh, these problems can be solved uh, uh, domestically. Uh, a dom uh, only national approach is wrong. Uh, in this case, in, in, during uh, this period of uh, a global challenge like COVID-19, uh, we have to strengthen our cooperation. Think, for instance, when the uh, vaccine finally will be available. It will be a tremendous effort in terms of logistics. For instance, must be produced, must be delivered, must be also, uh, must be uh, some choice uh, will be done who has to get this vaccine first. And we don't have to forget, actually, is very up in our agenda. We don't have to forget that there are now countries that usually have difficulties in getting access to normal medicines. Uh, and uh, uh, these countries have uh, the right to get the vaccine like, the, let's say, the more advanced countries. So we have to think not only in terms of our country, but this is a, a problem that either is solved globally or is not solved at all. Uh, so this is the international cooperation we have to aim. Uh, to think in terms of, uh, of what is uh, um, uh, necessary to do is to have a solution that is convenient for everyone. I think it's an essential role because non-governmental sector 
already is, as a, for instance, in Europe and in Italy, but also in Korea, they perform a very important role in uh, supplying uh, and in uh, um, substituting some actions that maybe the governments, especially at the central level, cannot do. In terms of welfare, non-governmental um, organizations are very important. When a pandemic strikes, it this means causes many troubles uh, for many people, um, health problems and uh, um, uh, economic problems, NGOs are fundamental. You know, uh, Italy and Korea share the fact that they, will, they were not exactly young societies. Uh, the, thanks also to, to the uh, level of uh, health care, uh, both in Korea and Italy, the average life uh, is, uh, is very high. And also both countries uh, don't have a high birth rate, so our uh, society is aging. Um, uh, this means that there are a lot of people in need of care. And sometime during the pandemic, these people are isolated. So NGOs can perform a very important role in this regard. Uh, well, if I knew this answer, <laughs> probably I would be rich. I, I guess, in my opinion, uh, uh, I don't expect the vaccine to be widely available until mid of next year. Uh, there are encouraging signs that the, the, the production of vaccine uh, will be probably completed by the end of the year, beginning of next year. But as I said before, then be, uh, must be manufactured on very large scale. We have to think of 7 billion people. We cannot think only of a few uh, hundred thousand or millions or only uh, uh, the people of uh, Italy or the people of Korea. We have to think in a global term. Then must be delivered and then must be also inoculated. So also this will be an enormous logistic effort. And I hope that the governments are preparing for this because um, uh, having the vaccine is not the final part. Uh, the, the final part is when this vaccine will be uh, available to the common citizens. Uh, then I hope that by the mid of next year we might come back to a kind of new normal, let's say. I hope so. I, I, I am sure and I hope so. Um, we need to have a high level of cooperation. Uh, this pandemic has um, shown um, very important um, features. For instance, countries that uh, were prepared, like Korea, they performed pretty, pretty well. I mean, actually exceptionally well. Uh, in handling the pandemic, in uh, keeping the numbers uh, very low. Um, in Europe, where we were not uh, prepared um, uh, to this kind of uh, uh, event. Uh, our last pandemic was uh, 100 years ago. Uh, probably at the beginning, we were caught by surprise. It took a while, it took a while to coordinate ourselves. And it seems that we should do much, much more at every level. I think at the um, scientific level, I think at the economic level, I think at the welfare level, uh, because uh, such global challenges cannot be um, dealt by a, a single country. I mean, take the case of Korea. I said uh, before that the Korean government has done an excellent job. But of course, it's not that Korea can go normal life before if the other countries are not. I mean, um, cannot let people in from areas where there are, uh, the, 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 the pandemic is still very strong. So this affects the life of Korean citizens. So this means that it must be a, a global effort to, to contain and bring the pandemic under control.